In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, one good. I mean, today is the Sunday of the temptation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is, uh, teach us a lot. Uh, the, the, the start of the gospel, it says, then or after that, he was taken by the Spirit to have this temptation. After what? After, if you read before that, you'll discover that it was the baptism. The Lord Jesus immediately after baptism was taken by the Holy Spirit to be tempted by Satan. Why is that? Because when Adam sinned, we inherited the sin. Our nature became spoiled. And by the victory of the Lord, this will be restored. Jesus had this fight against Satan as a man. He didn't use his divine powers. He used his humanity to lead a holy life and conquer the temptation of the devil. And this became for us, we inherited this victory. I understand that in the spiritual rules that one man can cause us all to sin, one man can cause us all to be victorious. So Jesus had this fight on behalf of humanity. Of course, he didn't have, as the Son of God, to go through this baptism and temptation. But he did that for our sake. So he did it. The Holy Spirit took him to the wilderness to stay 40 days without food and be spend time with the Father without any worries about food or, or sleep or drink or so, things like that. And then all the, the 40 days he had fights. The, what's recorded for us in the Gospel of St. Matthew and St. Luke uh, is the final segment of the temptation, which is recorded in three attacks. But the other Gospels speak of the 40 days he had fights with the devil, and he was victorious. Sometimes it comes to our mind, did Satan know who is that man? Did Satan realize that he's really the son of God? Possibly not. Why you say that? Because had Satan known that Jesus is really the son of God, he could have stopped the cross. He could have did his best to stop the cross. But he was confused. Definitely he was confused. So he approached, you know, at the start of every temptation, he says, if you are the son of God. Have you been the son of God? Do that. And he was curious to know if he is the son of God or not. Because he just listened in baptism, the, the voice from the father said, this is my son. So if you are the son of God, and you are hungry, why not to eat? Make the stone bread and eat. If you are the son of God, then why not to throw yourself from above the mountain? So the Satan was confused. Can we deceive Satan? Satan can be only attacked from us through self-denial. Because he doesn't know self-denial. You know, when, when people do not know a quality, they don't understand it because they don't have it. The devil does not have this self-denial concept at all. So he cannot understand self-denial. The behavior of Jesus was confusing to him. How? How could it be that you are a son of God and this is happening? You know, this is a rule that all over the history, I always think sometimes that West, the Western culture, the Western world, do not understand the religion. That's why they underestimate the power of religion. They think that terrorists can change. And uh, they treat terrorism in the wrong way because they don't understand the power of religion. They don't understand how these terrorists believe in Allah and they have to fulfill the commandments from Allah to kill. 
they don't understand it because they themselves are not religious. So Satan is, doesn't know what's self-denial. So he was confused. He approaches Jesus with hope that let me know if he is the one or not. And uh, he used the three, or at least these three recorded for us, three temptations. One of them concerns the temptation of the body, the needs, because he was hungry, eat. The other was temptation of the eye, lust of the eye. The third is the ambitions, and it possessed the whole world. And these were the three tricks, and they are the same that the devil is used, using against us nowadays, all over the history. The same that he used against Adam. The need for food, eat from the tree, it's nice to eat. The lofty eyes that I'll be like God, and the ambition. You know. the, these are the attacks of the devil against us. And then he asked to worship, to be worshiped. He can offer anything if we worship him, <coughs> which is a lie now, <coughs> because the devil cannot offer <clears throat> I just tell you how this temptation of the Lord help us. Because all of us are tempted. So long as we live in this body, we are always tempted by, by the same attacks. We like ambitions to be rich and be authoritative. We like the pleasures of the body, the lofty eyes, the, the same. And the Lord taught us how to win. He showed us that to win is to self-deny. If you deny yourself, then the devil cannot win against the battle. And he taught us to understand the Bible. And if we live with the Bible, then we are ready for a counterattack because we understand the Bible in the right way. By the way, the devil used the Bible wrongly. He actually quoted Psalms. And he quoted the Psalm in a wrong way. As if he's telling him, throw yourself and then the Lord will carry you. Of course, the Psalm didn't say that. The Psalm was not written as a prophecy for Jesus. It was for all of us. If we dwell in the shadow of the Almighty, which is Psalm 91, then he'll send his angels to protect us. <clears throat> but we don't throw ourselves. But the devil showed Jesus that the psalm is telling you, throw yourself. And you are, if you are the son of God, then the angels will carry you. Which is twisting the psalm. You know, it's always the devil has problem with the psalms. The psalms are the, hard, the, the hardest thing that attack the devil. And the devil like always to twist the, the Psalms. Because that's the way, you know, devil worshipers, when people worship the devil or use magic, they always use the Psalms in the twisted way. There's one person, honest person, that liked to help me some 30 years ago. He went and bought a book by 10,000 Egyptian pounds as a gift to me. And he gave the gift to me. I read a good part of the book in his house, but I didn't take the book. The book is written as magic. And uh, I, I was, it was interesting for me to see how those magicians use the Bible. It, it, it's all the Psalms written in a twisted way. And then since that, I knew that that's the way the devil liked it to be. He twists the Psalms such that the, instead of being attacked against him, it will be in his favor. Jesus answered him from the Old Testament, from the books of Moses, particularly Deuteronomy, the last book. Why is that? Because the 40 days that the Lord lived in the wilderness reminded everyone by the 40 years that the Israelites lived in the wilderness. And they received this last commandment from Moses in, the, in that book. And Jesus quoted three segments from this book in particular. 
to remind us by uh, how to fight. Saint Anthony the Great advised his disciples that always have a verse for every situation. If you are annoyed, there's a verse that help you. If you are scared, there's a verse that can help you. If you are angry, if you are, all the feelings can be uh, appeased or, or helped by uh, verses from the Bible. So Jesus showed us that that's the way of victory. He used the Bible in the proper way to protect himself against the temptation of the devil. The word the temptation, I'd like to comment on this a little bit because it's important, especially for us that came from Arabic background. There are two words, try God and tempt God. And these correspond to two Hebrew words, try God and tempt God. We are not allowed to tempt God, but we are allowed to try God. Unfortunately, in Arabic, the two words are the same. يجرب, يجرب الرب. لا تجرب الرب إلهك. هاتوا العشورة جربوني. These two, there are two words translated in Arabic to be the same. But understand it. We have the right to, to try how God is, is helpful. The purpose is good. <coughs> I like to know him better. <coughs> I like to know <coughs> something about God, so I try. I do something for God and expect him back to do something. I am allowed to do it. <clears throat> but I'm not allowed to tempt God in the sense that I push him as if I'm tricking God. You said that you have to do it. This is not right. Uh, it's a side issue that I just like to explain to you because some people say, how come that we have a verse that say, La tugarrab al-Rabb ilahak, or verse say, Hatul Ashura garrabuni. These are two verbs, two words. They are not the same. Try and tempt. I comment a little bit upon the desire of the devil that we worship him. The ultimate joy for Satan is we worship him because he is competing with Christ. And he likes us to worship him. And that's the reason that we expel him by worshiping to God. I remember that Abu Makari Yunan had a talk to the students that come leaving their home and living on the university uh, hostels. He said to them, as soon, and this teaching is for all of us, as soon as you enter your room, close the door, do matanya, worship God, and say loudly, I am your servant, Lord, you are my master. How this is very helpful. Suppose that I am tempted to do a sin, maybe to watch something wrong on TV or on my mobile or laptop. Then I'm alone. Then I worship. And stand and I say to the Lord, my Lord Jesus Christ, you are my master. I'm not a slave to the devil. This expels the devil. And I'd like you to try it. It's very powerful, very powerful. Immediately, the desire for the wrong thing will disappear. So it's a very good teaching for us. Why is that? Imagine a girl that is approached by two boys. The two boys try to befriend her or engage her. Then she says to one, you are the one that I chose. You are the one that I love. What the other boy will do? He has to disappear. He has no option. Isn't that exactly what we do in baptism? In baptism we do what? We look towards the West symbolic of as if we are addressing the devil. And we say to Satan, we renounce you. We renounce your powers and your despicable worship. Then we turn to the East and say, we accept you as a savior, my Lord Jesus Christ. 
This makes the devil flee. I repeat it because it's a good advice and I like you to try it. All of us get tempted. All of us get conditions whereby we like to do some sinful situation and I am in a struggle, in agony. I don't like this dual personality. I like to be pure, but the need of the pressure of the body makes me misbehave. Then use this power. Worship Christ and stand and say loudly with a voice, my Lord Jesus Christ, you are my master. I am a slave to you. I am not slave to your enemy, to the devil. This will make the devil flee 100%. And that's what happened. Jesus used self-denial against the devil, and that's also our way. You know this story that was said about St. Macarius once, and, uh, and, uh, or St. Anthony, it was said possibly wrongly about St. Anthony, that he was walking in the desert, and he saw snares of the devil spread all over the desert, where tens of thousands of monks were living. I had the vision. Who can, can be saved if these snares are scattered to that intensity? And then he cried to the Lord, help. And he received the answer. The, modest, the humble will be saved. The humble can bypass these snares. So self-denial. And part of the self-denial is the politeness. When we deal with the, when Satan, we have to be polite. He was an archangel. So we don't use abusive language. See what Jesus said. The highest, he said, away, away with me. Go away. That's it. He didn't use any abusive language. The epistle of St. Judas, St. Jude, tells us that even Archangel Michael was polite when he dealt with Satan. He had a problem against Satan concerning the body of Moses. All what he said, uh, let the Lord يعني, rebuke you, let God rebuke you. But, he, he didn't, uh, simply he was polite. And it was written in, written in this context. يعني, the context is to respect the authorities, respect the leaders. Why? Archangel Michael was polite with Satan because Satan was his boss. He was his leader one day. The fact that he fell is, is okay. It's, he will, he'll have his share with God. But as for me, I have to be polite. And that's the reason that when Saint Anthony had attacks from the devil, he used to say to them, leave me, I'm weaker than the, the, the smallest among you. So we don't like that. The truth that the church sometimes says that he humiliates the devils under the feet of the authorities, but that's the request of the church regarding the person, the, the bishop or the patriarch, but not him. He wouldn't say, I trample on you, Satan. No, because the trick against Satan is self-denial, not arrogance. So we say you are weak, leave me alone. Why, why you attack me? I'm weak. And that's the teaching of Santa Anthony. As a summary, understand that this teaching in this small passage is very important for us. It teaches us how to be victorious. The last thing about the victory, what happened after? What's the end of the, the, this fight? The devil left for, for a time. And immediately, the angels came to serve the Lord. The, I read this part from the Catholic translation, and he said in this book that the word serve here is to offer food. So it seems that maybe true, the original word means offer food. So he was hungry, and he didn't like to, to use his divinity.
to transfer stone to bread, but the angel came to him as a human, victorious, and served for him what he needs. And this is not for Jesus only, it's for all of us. Any time we are victorious, we receive the help from the angels to serve us. It's very enjoyable, and very, uh, we, we expect that. Yani, what do I gain from being defeated? Especially in the, in the physical desires, yeah. Sometimes the physical desire pressures to the extent that I do something to my body and uh, as if I'm receiving some pleasure for a few minutes. Then after that, I lose the gain, which is the angels can serve me. <clears throat> and this is a promise. A promise from this passage that when the devil left, the angels came to help. May the Lord give us this clarity in our struggle. Is it possible to be victorious? Of course, because Jesus was victorious. He showed us the way. He gave us the hope to be victorious. How? By the usage of the proper usage of the word of God. How also? By self-denial. What we expect? We expect that the angels will come to serve us. Glory be to the name of God forever. Amen.